come before you. Got your Bibles? We'll turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. Um, we're going to read some scripture today in your hearing. Stand in need of your prayers today, and I've already said, I want to welcome all the visitors that are here with us today. I really thank God that you're here this morning. I want you to feel um, right at home and feel a part of us, and um, hoping and praying that um, there'll be something here that will draw you back to this place. Um, that is my prayer as people come in and as they go out. Um, of course, some of you all already know this, but after you come once, I'm probably going to get your tag number, your license number, your date of birth, um, everything about you, and I'm probably going to have your phone number before it's over with, and I'm probably going to call you, um, right, Mr. Maxie, and I'm going to be looking for you to come back to the church. But um, I care about people, and it's more than people, though. Um, if you're here today and you're breathing and you're walking and you're talking, and you're a living soul and you're a living creature, you're important to God. And um, not only important to God, but you're important to the church. And so we're thankful you're here with us today. So let's be much in prayer this morning. One thing we will have to do this morning, we will have to liven up just a little bit. Um, everybody reach out there like, like this. Just watch, reach out there and let's turn it up just a little bit. Uh, everybody turn it up. All right. So be much in prayer. Excited about what God's gave us today. Imagine that. Um, I'll be honest, anytime God gives me something to preach, I'm excited about it because I know, know that it comes straight from His throne. And so that excites me to no end, to know that um, we've got a God. And uh, you might look at me like I'm crazy, but I'll be honest, I'm just a man. And um, when I go home and when I pray and when I study, and I've been on both sides of it. I've been on the side of it where God was just speaking to me, Keith, just on a, I mean, an hourly basis, just giving me everything. And then I've been on the flip side of that and been just scratching and digging and trying to get hold of anything. It's just not easy, Ed, without God. As a matter of fact, it's impossible, just to be honest. So um, for God to speak to me, it really excites me, and so it should excite us today um, just to know that He cares enough about us that He'd send a message our way. So now I want you to pray. Uh, sixth chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, we're going to read what Paul had to say um, to the Corinthian people. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm going to read two verses starting at verse 19. Verse 19, chapter 6 of the book of 1 Corinthians, and it reads like this, What know ye not? And, and pay attention, uh, verse 19, he said what, and then a big question mark. So in other words, um, he's wanting these people to understand something here. Um, and I think with that big question mark, he's kind of surprised just a little bit. So pay attention to that and think about that as I read this. It says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. And that's all I'm going to read this morning. Now, I want you to pray just a few minutes um, that God would help us today. And the thought today and what I'm going to try to preach about today and what I want you to think about is what it really means to belong to God. I want you to think about that for a few minutes. It's more than just a few words, Charles, um, knowing that you belong to God. Now, there was a, a lot of people that raised their hand, which I... I uh, really appreciate those girls singing that song. That's going to help me with my message today. Um, I, I've thought about each one that raised their hand, and, and what you um, said when you raised your hand was, or whether you raised it or whether you didn't, um, if you're here today and you're saved, I want you to know that you belong to God today. Is everybody with me on that page today? You uh, belong to God. Now, when I was born into this world, um, I had two births. I had a natural birth, fe February the 15th, 1984. Um, for those of you that are wanting to add that up, that is 31 years ago. And, and yes, I'm still in my prime, so don't get no other ideas about it. Um, but 31 years ago, I was born into this world, and I was born to um, Danny Drummonds, and I was born to Becky Drummonds. That's my mom, and that's my dad. Now, Paxton was born into this world, and I'd have to think on that date for just a minute because I ain't good at that. Um, but anyways, Paxton was born into this world 6 6 12. I can always remember. That'd be June the 6th, 2012. But uh, anyways, he was born into this world, and when he came into this world, Keith, he belongs to me and Mandy, and I uh, belong to my mother. 
mother and father at that time. And so uh, I had that birth, but then I had a spiritual birth. And I, I can't tell you the exact date on when I was saved. I don't remember um, what day of the month it was, but it was around, it was in December. It was at a Christmas play. Um, but when I was born that time, I was born to God, and I belonged to Christ. And so um, He is who I belong to today. Are you with me as I paint this picture to you today? If you're a child of God today, um, you belong to Him. And that's important today. It means something today, folks, to belong to God. Do you realize that uh, when you say, I belong to God, that means something today. And I'm excited about belonging to God, to be honest. I, uh, I'm glad that I'm not like those. And let me say this, if you're here today and you've never been saved and you've never chose Jesus as your Savior, I want you to know this, you can belong to Him today. You can belong to God today. You um, can let Him come into your heart, let Him come into your life, and I'm going to preach about that in a few minutes. But uh, for us people that are saved today, we need to realize what it really means to say, hey, I belong to God. Um, it's more than just a bunch of words, Keith. It means something great today to be able to say that you belong to God. Everybody got that this morning? Did I say it enough times? Uh, did I say it enough that it sinks in that um, it's important today to know that you belong to God? It's more, Miss Bobby. I, I thought about this a million times. You know what? Belonging to my natural mother and my natural father and just because... Um, Paxton's dad as a preacher does not mean that it will get him into the kingdom of God. Uh, just because his dad's a preacher, just because of who your mom and dad is, does not get you into the kingdom of God. But being born again and coming to belong to Jesus Christ will get you a place in heaven one day, my friend. Be much in prayer. I'm going to look at the scripture. Paul um, was speaking to a group of people here and he really wanted them to understand. And he said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God. Now I want you to know something today. This carnal body you look at today, Keith, um, inside of it is something that is living and something that is alive today. And so um, it matters what I do with this outward man that you're looking at today. It matters. I've got to maintain it and I've got to keep it up to par if you know what I'm saying, and I'm not going to get into all that, but uh, what I really, really, really want to focus on today, and what I really, really, really want you to understand today, is that if you're here today and you're a child of God, you're somebody today. Do you realize that today, that for me to be able to stand, and for me to be able to say, now listen, some of you moms and dads can relate with this, i got to get the picture drawn before I can preach about it, uh, some of you mom and dads can relate with this, have you ever been proud of your kids, maybe they went, uh, I know my mom was just ecstatic the day I walked across the stage at high school and had an education. You know what? I had a diploma. Uh, man, that fired her up. Why? Because I didn't go to school but just when it's convenient. So uh, she was excited about that and she was happy about that. And so at different times in life we get excited about different things but uh, I'm sure if my mother was here today and some of you moms and dads will be able to attest to what uh, I'm about to say, there's never going to be a day like Ed when I see Paxton get up from uh, the seat in the back because I know that's where he's going to sit because he's going to be a preacher one day and that's the way we are but uh, I'm just kidding really I'm just trying to get you all to smile just a little bit come on help me out uh, listen the preacher's done broke his ankle before he got here this morning hurt his back and it's big as a softball uh, that ought to make you smile if nothing else don't you know uh, Paxton decided to throw a spider man shoe on the steps there and I fell to the bottom this morning but uh, so listen, we are to be lively people today. You know what I mean? Alive about uh, and excited about what Jesus has done for us. He bought me and I'm going to preach about that. And He paid for my sins with His blood, Keith. And I don't belong to myself no more. Listen, when I chose Jesus as my Savior, I decided right then I was going to forsake myself. I was going to forsake my ways and I was going to humble myself and I was going to ask Him to have mercy mercy. Hallelujah. How many people like mercy today? Isn't that great? Come on, raise your hand. 
Alabama, some of y'all must just want the law then. You want judgment or do you want mercy? You want mercy? Get your hand in the air. I like mercy today. Why? Because I'm a sinner. Why? Because I come short. But praise be to God, Jesus Christ's blood paid away for me. And through him, because I belong to him, I'm forgiven for that today. Ain't it great to know that this morning? It's good to be saved today, folks. It's good to know Christ. If you're here today and you don't have no idea what it means to be saved, I'm going to explain that to you this morning while I preach. I thought about what Paul was trying to get these people to realize. He said, you are bought with a price. What And what did eternal life and what did life more abundant? How many people here today in the congregation are living the abundant life? I want to be honest with you. I can raise my hand today. Thank you, Marvin. No, I'm not rich and no, I'm not famous, but I'll tell you what I am. I'm saved today. Amen. And I'll tell you what else I am. I belong to a king, my friend, my father. Amen. Christ is who I'm preaching about today. He is somebody. My dad's somebody today. Who is he? He's the alpha, which means the beginning. He's the omega, which means the end. And he's everything in between. In Grover, he's an all-sufficient Savior today, folks, that is lacking nothing today. One that is able to deliver the promises that he makes to you and I today. That's good, ain't it? To know that you belong to God. Preacher, what does it mean? It means this to me. It means that if tomorrow doesn't come, it means that things will be all right for me. Amen? Can anybody agree with that today? And it means to me that if tomorrow never comes and I never wait to to go another day and if I never make it back to this place today, listen to me, folks. I'm not preaching to get to heaven. Do you all realize that? This might be the last message that I ever get to preach. Let me go, yeah. Boy, might be the last message I ever deliver, but I'm not preaching to get to heaven. Amen. I'm preaching because I love you. I'm preaching because I'm afraid not to. I'm preaching. Why? Because I want to see the pews filled. Derek, why do you want to see them filled? I want to see people glorifying and praising the Lord. Amen. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody ought to be going, ooh, right now. We ought to be going, ooh. Why? Because He's worthy of our praise. He came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey and they, Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. We ought to be saying it and living it today, my friend. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of our praise today. Derek, what does it mean to belong to God? It means I have freedom today. Do you realize that? Sin, what are you free from? I have been freed, big Dan, from my sin. I had a debt that I could not pay. Do you realize that? A sin debt. What What was that? I'll tell you what, I sin and I come short every day of my life. And Johnny, we all know and we all realize that there must be an atonement for sin. There has to be a payment for sin. In the Old Testament, they'd kill goats, they'd kill land, they'd kill everything they had. But but praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There was a lamb, the Bible said, talking about Christ. I'm talking about woman without spot, woman without blemish that came. Oh my goodness, gave his life. We ought to, you Baptist people ought to wake up today. Do you know that? Amen. Our God's not dead today. Do you know where Muhammad is? He's a pile of bones. Do you know where Buddha is? He's a pile of bones. Do you know where Jesus is? He's alive and he's ascended and he's with the Father and he's still alive and he's in me and he's in you and we ought to be fired up about it today. Amen. Our God's not dead. He's not on a journey. He's doing well. Amen. Where's he at, preacher? I'll tell you where he's at. He's living inside of me. Where's he at, preacher? He should be living inside of you. Where's he at, preacher? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me and you. What's that mean? That means every time I do something dumb. Anybody ever do anything dumb? I got three honest people in the whole congregation. Anybody ever do anything dumb? They say, Amen, preacher. Anybody ever do anything stupid? Amen, preacher. Can't believe you said that on video. I said it. We've all sinned. We've all come short. We've all got our differences and we've all got our faults. But praise be to God, there's a man sitting there that when I do something dumb, he says, you know what? He belongs to us. He belongs to me. Forgive his sins. I've died for him. I love him. And his debt has been paid today. Amen. Don't that make you feel good to know that because you're a child of God and you belong to God, 
How many people are glad you belong to God today? I tell you what, I'm glad I belong to Him today. Oh my goodness, if I didn't, I'd be of most men most miserable. And you know what? Because I belong to God today, I've got access to the throne. How many of you are? Woo, Derek, what? Man, that ought to just put glory bumps all over you. I mean, my ankle even feels better, you know? That ought to put glory bumps from the bottom to the top of you to know that you've got access to the throne of God. What's that mean? That means when I need Him, I can get on my knees or I can drive down the road and I can humble my heart and he comes into my life and his joy just overflows my being. Don't that make you feel good today? No. Derek, you're fired up all the time anymore. We're on a, we're on a fired up pace right now. That's all I need to say about it. You know what I mean? There ain't nothing worth looking back to. I want to press towards the mark. What's the mark? I'm telling you, we got a mark out there, folks. First Baptist Church being stationed. We're going to make a mark. We're already making a mark in the community. Do you realize that? I thought about it as I sat up here in the choir and I tried my best to mumble because I can't sing and I hummed a little bit. But I looked out and I thought, Lord, how many people are here at this church today? And God, how good you've been to us and how that you've added to the church. And I heard a voice say, Derek, I'm able to do more than that. I'm able to do above and beyond what you can comprehend. Listen to me, folks. There's a mark out there. If you'll believe today and accept and realize that you're a child of God you belong to him and guess what sin has no power over me and you no more and there is no limits with what God can do with us today what's it mean preacher to belong to God I've got access to the throne Keith amen I can call on him anytime I need him and he'll be there in the wee hours of the night, he'll be there. When I was lost and undone, he was there. And guess what? When I needed him today, he was there. And more than that, what does it mean to belong to God? It means I can obtain and I can claim his promises. Amen. Why? Because, oh, listen, if you ever made your kids any promises, I want you to know this. When I make Paxton a promise, I do my very best, you know, to keep that promise. Why? Because it's important, Keith. If I ever break one of them, then he might think I'm going to break the next one. But I can say this. I'm glad that God has never broken a promise to any of his people. Amen. And just because I belong to God means I can obtain those. I can claim those. I want to claim the one where he said, I'm going away, but I'm coming back again. I'm going to claim that one. What about you? You want it? I want that and preacher I want that one too why because that means that this world is not going to be my home I'm not going to be here forever I'm going to be absent from the body but I'll be present with the Lord the Bible says ain't that great folks you can my goodness to belong to God means something to you. it means I've got the spirit of God does the spirit of God mean anything to any of you Huh? What does it do for you? It leads us. It guides us. And uh, I've heard Robin, and Robin, I'm going to pick on you, man. I'm one of them name-calling preachers. You know, Zachary, uh, I, that's what I'm good at. I'm glad you're here today, by the way. But listen, I've heard different ones of you mothers make prayer requests for uh, your children about how that when they get older, how they've got to make the right choices and how important it is for them to do the right. But I'm so glad today that there's a spirit that's inside of a child of God. So Somebody that belongs to God, Keith, there's always a voice there, whether mom's there, whether dad's there, or listen, or whether uh, Mr. Rich is there, whether I'm there, or anybody else is there, there's a voice that, folks, speaks to us and tells us when we're making the right decision, tells us when we're doing the right thing. Without that, I would be hopeless today. Why? Because I wouldn't know how to lead, I wouldn't know how to guide, and we'd all be like sheep just going astray, wouldn't we, without the Spirit of God. Thank God for it today. How about you? Folks, you belong to God. That means you're forgiven. You belong to God. That means you got hope today. What? Let me, let me sum this up real quick and then I'm going to move on. Guess what? To be a child of God today means that our hope is not in this world. Amen. Paul said, if my hope was in this world, I'd be a most men, most miserable. Keith, if I thought, now this thing is pretty good. I'm enjoying life. But if I thought, Keith Rich, that you was going to need that cane the rest of your life or Miss Bobby, that pink thing you got pushing around, that ain't going to be in heaven. 
heaven. Amen. If I thought, hallelujah, 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 if I thought this was as good as it was going to be, Keith, I'd get depressed. But I'm telling you, there's something better today, folks. Do you realize that? For a child of God, somebody that belongs to God, there's something far better than what we're looking at today. Don't you like that? Somebody want to be saved today? I want you to come take my hand just a minute. I want you to give your heart and give your life to Jesus. How do I do it? All I had to do was ask Him to come in. All I had to do was humble myself. All I had to say was, you know what, God, I, I want to belong to you. I want to be yours and I want you to be mine and I don't want to live the way I've been living and I want you to clean me up and I want you to fix me and I want to be born again. And He came into my life. He'll come into your life. For ye are bought with a price. It cost Jesus something great. Do you know that? There is no greater thing that a man can do than to lay down his life. Do you realize that? That is the very biggest thing. LC, if I uh, was to have the choice and I had to lay down my life for my little boy, that would be the greatest thing that I could ever do for him, to uh, give my last breath. Do you see what I'm trying to say today? There was a man that gave his last breath, that gave him, my goodness, he came down from heaven and he dwelled among this earth and he was beaten and he was mocked and he was abused and he did all that and he never once opened his mouth. Do you realize there was a man that loved you so much that he didn't even know if you'd even choose to believe, but he still chose to come and to do, there was no guarantee. Now I want you to think, you man never thought about this. There was no guarantee that anybody was going to believe anything about Jesus when he gave his life. Have you ever thought about that? That man bled and he died on the cross and it was a choice and it was a gift and you got the choice to make today. You can choose to belong to God today. Do you realize that? Or you can choose death and you can die. But I'm glad I chose Jesus and I chose life. How about you? Amen. What does it mean to belong to God? When you belong to God, that means you're tied to the church. Amen. How many people like a church? Huh? I like a church. Why do you like it, preacher? Well, there's a lot of reasons I like it, but I'll tell you what I like about it probably the most. I like being a part of something that there's a love about it that I just can't describe it. I'll be honest. To love Keith that uh, goes so early, there's a love in this place that is greater than the love for my family that they have. And I just can't describe it. Uh, I'm closer to a lot of you than I am my own flesh and blood. I'm not talking about Mandy Paxton. Me and him's tight. But uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Cousins and uh, maybe brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, moms and dads. And uh, I'm closer. Why? Because we're a family. Why are we a family? Because we... We belong to God. Do you realize that? And guess what? When I become a part of the church, I'm affiliated with people that have the same desire, have the same want to. We've all got the same desire, right? Amen. Yeah, I want you to hush, preacher. We got the same want to. I'm talking about seeing people saved. I'm talking about seeing the church grow. And I'm talking about making disciples. We all agree on that today, don't we? Amen. I can't get amen on that. I might as well go home and quit. We've got to have the same desire, don't we? You're bought with a price. I can't get past that, can I? Therefore glorify God in your body. What's our whole purpose of life? Benjamin Boggs can tell you about that. So can Dan Jones and anybody that's in our discipleship training class. They're all grinning right now because it was beat and it was pounded in our heads. And I appreciate it, Ben. That's probably one of the only good things you've ever done for me, Ben. No, I'm just kidding. That was a good thing. You know what? Because a lot of times people lose focus that our whole purpose in life is to glorify God. Do you realize that today, folks? Listen to me. Because I belong to Him, that means I need to glorify Him. How do I glorify Him? I live for Him. How do I live for Him? I get in the Word of God and I let my convic convictions condemn me and I reflect on them and I move closer to the mark. And because I do that and when I say no to sin, that means I'm glorifying God. Amen. That means I'm choosing good over bad. That means I'm choosing to come to church instead of sitting at home. Amen. That means I'm taking the high road and because I do that, I glorify God by doing that. Amen. Amen. Amen's on that. 
You mean we just ain't saved just sit here on this seat and look at you? No, that ain't what it's all about. Amen? You don't belong to me, you belong to God. It means something today. I'm going to finish up like this. This is what Paul was trying to get these people to realize. They belong to God, and because they belong to God, they were different. Huh? Now I'm going to go ahead and ka-cha. You know what I mean? Me and you as children of God, those of you that belong to God, we are different. How are we different, Derek? We walk different. When you fall down the steps, you will hobble behind the pulpit. That has nothing to do with it. We walk different. We talk different. We act different. We live different. Amen. Can, I, can anybody amen me in this congregation? When you belong, oh, pay attention to me. Zone in a minute. When you belong to God, you live different. Amen. How do I live different? You do everything different. You know what you do? You support the church. You do the right thing. You love your neighbor. Amen. You don't hold grudges. Oh, my goodness. In other words, you love those people around you and your way. Willing to give, oh my goodness. Listen to me. If you really want to fulfill the purpose of God, love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I could preach an hour on that. How many people want to listen? Hmm. To love thy neighbor as thyself. Think about that a few minutes. To belong to God means I'm accountable, Ed. This is going to finish up my message today. Come get you a song. I'm coming to a close. Listen, folks. It was said in Sunday school this morning about how that sometimes people have a hard time accepting Christ because it's so easy. We might be painting a little bit of a wrong picture about that. I want you to hear me out a minute. To belong to God. Granted, it's a choice as simple as kneeling on your knees and asking Him to come into your heart. Amen? Are you with me? But when you choose to belong to God, and when you choose to be saved, you take off that old man, and you put on a new. Amen? The Bible says that we become a new creature Created in Christ Jesus. In other words, when we choose to be saved, we say that we choose to be Christ-like. Amen? There's some accountability about belonging to God. Keith, I'm going to be honest. Everybody, if you would, let's all stand. He paid my debt. Everybody agree? My debt of sin, God paid that for me. When Christ, when He sent Christ and He died on the cross and He hung there and He bled for me, He paid my debt. And I'm going to get past what everybody looks like this morning. I won't get past you about your clothes you got on. and I won't get past the smiles on your face and all the makeup and the pretty hair. And I won't, bless you, buddy. I want to get past every bit of that and I'm going to get right down into your heart. Christ looks at our hearts today. Amen. Amen. When He sees me, He sees the blood. When He sees you, what does He see this morning? I think about the prodigal son, and I'm going to close like this. There may be somebody that needs to come back to God today. The prodigal son said, Dad, give me everything that's mine. I'm going to go and I'm going to live however I want to. I'm going to do what I want to. In other words, I'm going to go to bed when I want to. I'm going to eat when I want to. I'm going to sleep when I want to. You understand what I'm saying? There ain't anybody in the congregation they turned their back on God and just said, you know what, I'm going to do what I want to do for a little while. I'm going to try it my way. I want you to know someday you still belong to God. Amen. I just won't come back, preacher. Well, guess what? There'll be somebody else preaching to you somewhere else. Amen. People living like the devil today. Amen? A lot of them save people. Amen? You need to realize you belong to God. I preach eternal salvation. Do you believe it? Absolutely. 
prodigal son came back and guess what his dad was doing? Standing there looking for him. Guess what he done? He got the ring and he got the robe and he killed the fatted calf. In other words, he welcomed him back. That's what God wants to do for you this morning. You belong to Him. You. I'm preaching. You belong to Him. You belong to Him. You need to listen to Him. You hear His voice today. Don't harden your heart. Let's come and pray. While they sing.